multiple pulmonary dysplasia is the major or a major cause of infant morbidity and mortality in the U.S. There are 14,000 new cases per year, and despite uh, new uh, uh, advances in perinatal and neonatal care, the incidence remains unchanged at 30% of infants that weigh less than 1,000 grams. The only currently acceptable preventative therapies are vitamin A and caffeine. So what is caffeine? Caffeine is a methyl xanthine that blocks adenosine receptors. And here I have a little schematic of the receptors on adenosine. Uh, adenosine can have either excitatory or inhibitory actions on these receptors. Uh, caffeine has been shown to decrease the incidence of BPD as compared to placebo control. And it has been shown to reduce inflammation, uh, primarily in TNF-alpha, or of TNF-alpha in newborn monitoring their cells in vitro. So because of these properties <clears throat> that caffeine has, uh, our hypothesis was that caffeine will decrease inflammation and reduce alveolar hypoplasia during hyperoxia exposure. So our experimental design was that we set up two dams in hyperoxia and two dams in Romare. Uh, we normalized in each of these two groups so that we had a N of six for each of the two dams in Romare and N of nine for each of the two dams in hyperoxia. Uh, we exposed the hyperoxia groups to 80% hyperoxia, and we exchanged the mothers between the caffeine groups and the saline groups uh, in and out of hyperoxia on a daily basis to uh, reduce uh, any oxygen toxicity. The level of caffeine citrate that we administered to these uh, caffeine-treated animals was a uh, load of 20 milligrams per kilogram intraperinatally on postnatal day one, and we continued until postnatal day 15 with a dose of 10 milligrams per kilogram intraperinatally for every day after the first day. Uh, so we collected bronchial neurolavage fluid. Uh, we also collected the right lung for RNA analysis, and we collected the left lung for uh, histological analysis. So all of our results will be uh, shown as the mean, plus or minus the standard error of the mean, and asterisk indicates a p-value of less than 0.05. So the first thing that we looked at was the, uh, the weight gain in these two different groups. And you can see here, this is the Rumer group. The black here indicates the saline treated, and the green indicates the caffeine treated. You can see that the caffeine treated had poor weight gain in the Rumer group. And here, you can see the hyperoxia group, red indicating the saline, yellow indicating the caffeine. And you can see the same pattern where the caffeine group uh, had uh, inferior or had worse weight gain. So the next thing that we looked at was our um, GAL collection, and we noticed that uh, both in uh, at postnatal day three and postnatal day fifteen, that we had increases in the number of neutrophils. So PM three, we had a significant increase in even the Rumer group for the caffeine treated animals, and at P P fifteen, we had a uh, significant increase in the hyperoxia for the caffeine-treated uh, animals. So <clears throat> in order to sort of help uh, back this information up with some mRNA analysis for uh, inflammatory markers, we looked at CXCO1 uh, mRNA expression and if a neutrophil is chemoattractant. And we noticed that uh, there were significant increases not only in the rumen group, but also in the hyperoxia group. So uh, we wanted to next look at it to see if whether the, this inflammatory impact would also impact the uh, morphology of the lungs. So uh, we noticed that caffeine actually worsens alveolar hypoplasia in hyperoxia, and uh, we did some 
volumetric analysis using the radio valence counts and noticed that antiperoxia of the caffeine seemed to significantly uh, decrease the number of uh, alveolar counts. Um, it's not marked here, but these differences in hyperoxia also are significant compared to the linear <coughs> controls. <clears throat> so in order to see uh, what differences in uh, cell types, whether certain cells were uh, decreased, we uh, did a stain for alveolar type 2 cells, and we noticed that there were actually decreases both in room air for the caffeine-treated animals and also in hyperoxia for the caffeine-treated animals. Um, we also did some mRNA analysis and noticed that at room air, there were significant decreases in the uh, mRNA level of FTC, and uh, there was a very different trend in the uh, hyperoxia group for mRNA So in order to uh, provide maybe some sort of a mechanism for this, we looked at uh, cell apoptosis. And uh, the immunofluorescent stain, actually, uh, we could visibly see that there were uh, marked increases in the number of cells that were seen positively for apoptosis. And uh, our quantification for this also showed uh, similar findings that we had significant increases in apoptosis in caffeine-treated groups, both in room air and in hyperoxia. 